The concept of time is a bit different in these places. Time goes by for the most part very slowly and is hard for the people who became refugees and lost their native land and homes because of the armenian azerbaijani nagorno karabakh conflict, which became a real war in the early 90s. These Azerbaijanis, who were forced to leave their lands in the result of the occupation by the Armenian armed forces, lived by only one desire and one hope. They desired to return to their native land soon and hoped to build and restore their destroyed and looted properties. The mountainous Karabakh is considered an ancient settlement and rich cultural shrine of Azerbaijan. Its inhabitants have created for thousands of years a rich cultural heritage included in the world cultural treasure. These lands became a bloody battlefield at times in the course of history. A real tragedy began in the end of the 18th and the beginning of the 19th centuries. Russia, targeting to occupy the Caucasus in the beginning of the 19th century, waged a war against Iran over Azerbaijan. All the Khanates, principalities in the northern Azerbaijan, were annexed by Russia. On February 10 of 1828, Russia and Iran signed the Turkmenchai Treaty, according to which the northern Azerbaijan was incorporated into Russia and the southern Azerbaijan into Iran. They created seven Russian provinces in the territory which used to belong to Khans of northern Azerbaijan. 18,000 Armenian families from the southern Azerbaijan and Iran were moved to the southern Caucasus in the course of the war during 1826 through 1828. The following two years witnessed 40,000 Armenians from Iran and 84,000 from Turkey move into Yelizaveta Pol and Iravan provinces in Azerbaijan. Under a special protection of the Russian Tsar, Armenians, within a short interval, by the aid of guns and physical power, made the indigenous Azerbaijanis flee. Part of the local population was forced to move into Iran and Turkey, and the other part into central territories of Azerbaijan. Thus, the demographic status in these lands changed drastically towards the beginning of the 20th century. Armenians who settled in the new territories after a short while started to dream about from sea to sea Great Armenia. Having created the Dashnak Tsutsun organization in 1890 in Tbilisi, the Armenian nationalists began mass destruction of the Azerbaijani population all over Caucasus. These bloody events were amplified in 1905-1907 particularly. In those years, in Zangezur, Karabakh, and other regions, thousands of Azerbaijanis were killed. In 1918, on May the 27th, with the dissolution, Transcaucasian United Government, Georgia, Azerbaijan, and Armenia declared their independence. This was the time when the winners of the World War were busy drawing new borderlines in this region. The Western powers, which deemed necessary the existence of independent Caucasian republics to prevent the spread of Bolshevism, stated they would recognize Azerbaijan People's Republic only if Erevan was granted to Armenians as their capital. To protect its independence and be recognized by the world countries, Azerbaijan had to compromise. This laid the foundation of the tragedy of hundreds of thousands of Azerbaijanis living in Erevan and surrounding areas. In the two massacres, which took place in 1905-1907 and in 1918-1920, in Transcaucasia around 2 million Azerbaijanis were killed by Armenians or forced out of their homes. Later, in 1920, Azerbaijan People's Republic was this time annexed following the communist Russia's military expansion. The Soviet rule was also established a little later in Dashnak, Armenia, which suffered a serious defeat in the war with Turkey. The communist Russia granted as a gift in 1920 the Zangezur region of Azerbaijan to Armenia, which had a small territory. 
and in 1923 the mountainous Nagorno-Karabakh autonomous region was established in favor of Armenians in the territory of Azerbaijan Socialist Soviet Republic. Upon the end of the Second World War, in November of 1945, the government of USSR adopted a decision to move Armenians living abroad into the Soviet Armenia, assuming as a basis the Armenian government's petition. In 1946-1948, 100,000 Armenians were received and accommodated in Armenia. The Armenian government, making an excuse that they had difficulty to accommodate Armenians moving from abroad, addressed a request to Joseph Stalin to move the Azerbaijani population living in this republic to Azerbaijan SSR. In 1948-1953, more than 144,000 Azerbaijanis were forced moved out of Armenia based on the decision 483 of December the 27th of 1947 of the USSR Council of Ministers. In 1985, with Mikhail Gorbachev's coming to power, the Armenians and pro-Armenian forces that gathered around him made an immediate move and put forward their long-standing plan to realize the idea of Great Armenia, which they kept in their minds for a long time. As the first step, in 1987, they achieved to remove Haydar Aliyev, a member of Politburo, from his position. Beginning from 1988, by intimidations and terror, more than 200,000 Azerbaijanis living in Armenia were expelled from their native land. In the course, the ethnic cleansing 216 people were killed. Thus, the large stage of the policy Armenia without Turks of Armenian nationalists was realized. Armenia became a mono-ethnic state. The Armenian separatists, having completed the ethnic cleansing operations in Armenia, concentrated all of their forces in nagorno karabakh and chose the Azerbaijani territory as the main target for terrorist activity. From the summer of 1991, the conflict in the territory of Nagorno-Karabakh became an open war. The collapse of the USSR gave an impulse to the Armenian military units, which already began to act as an organized army to start large-scale military operations in the territory of Nagorno-Karabakh. The Armenian armed forces in the Nagorno-Karabakh territory of Azerbaijan, with the aid of the personnel and equipment of the former USSR, 366 motorized infantry located in Hankendi, invaded the town of Khojali and committed genocide against the Azerbaijani people in 1992 on the night February 25, 226. During the occupation of Khojali, 613 peaceful civilians, including 63 children, 106 women, 70 elderly people were tortured, brutally killed and their bodies mutilated, heads cut, eyes pricked out, bayonets thrusted into the wombs of pregnant women just because they were Azerbaijanis. In 1991-1993, the Armenian armed forces occupied 20% of the Azerbaijani territory, Nagorno-Karabakh and seven adjacent to it regions, as well as seven villages to Kazakh region and one village of Sadarak region. Around 700,000 Azerbaijanis became displaced in their own country. 20,000 people died, 50,000 became disabled, 200,000 people got various bodily injuries, and around 4,900 people were lost or captured. As a result of military aggression, a major part of Azerbaijan's territory, fertile lands were occupied. The economy of the country suffered roughly 60 billion US dollars. All the private property which the local population left in the occupied lands before fleeing was looted by Armenians. The Azerbaijani displaced persons and refugees who lost their native lands were forced to live in more than 1,600 very densely populated facilities with no conveniences and unbearable conditions in 62 towns and regions of the country, in 12 refugee camps, 
three settlements of train box cars on the railroad, 16 settlements of summer houses, dormitories, half-finished houses, dugouts, and etc. In addition, 50,000 Mshati Turks deported from Central Asia, as well as 11,000 Russian citizens of Chechen origin, Afghans, Iranians, Iraqis, and Palestinians intending to get asylum took refugee in Azerbaijan in 1990s. the national leader Haydar Aliyev, who came to power in 1993 to eliminate the results of this humanitarian disaster, deemed it important to solve the problem on the state level alongside accepting international aid. A complete legal framework in compliance with international norms was established and state programs adopted. Haider Aliyev directed the first dividends from the oil to the social protection of refugees and IDPs and enhancing their living standards. Ilham Aliyev continued national leader Haider Aliyev's course and prioritized abolishment of refugee camps. Aliyev had promised before the presidential elections that there would be no refugee camps left in Azerbaijan within the next five years. In December 2007, the president, keeping his word, achieved the abolishment of all 12 refugee camps. At the expense of resources from the state oil fund, 67 new towns with all the social and technical infrastructure were built providing 19,753 houses with 1,114,000 square meter floor area. The influential organizations visiting Azerbaijan highly evaluate Azerbaijan's efforts and cooperation with the international humanitarian organizations. Today, 44 international and 39 local humanitarian aid organizations render assistance in different areas to refugees, IDPs, and vulnerable groups of population. Their transparent and free activities are coordinated from a single center. President Ilham Aliyev supposes that were these organizations not active in early 1990s, this humanitarian disaster could have brought to gravest results. Today, the Azerbaijani lands, though temporarily, are under occupation. Armenia keeps ignoring the UN Security Council's four resolutions on an immediate and peaceful solution of the conflict. Withdrawal of all occupying forces from the territories and return of the refugees and IDPs to their native lands. The government of Azerbaijan is taking measures to solve the problems of the internally displaced people, to provide them with work and subsistence in the places of their temporary residence. The world, however, has to know that the only solution to the problems of these Azerbaijanis is their return to their native lands, which is their inalienable right. The government of Azerbaijan will do everything possible to make sure that this happens.